does Kamala Harris for you represent any departure from the Biden administration in terms of immigration policy or the possibilities of a, of a new immigration vision? No, no, not, not at all. Matter of fact, she's going to be more extreme than Biden, in my view, simply because Biden, if, if you know, I, I've known Joe Biden for 25, 30 years. The, the real Joe Biden, he's more of a centrist. I mean, he'll never be as conservative enough for me, but the Joe Biden Nobody. as president is unrecognizable to me. I mean, I remember many a day walking with him through the Senate tunnels uh, and just having beautiful conversations with him. And to look at the way he's governing now as president, it's like, where the heck did all those conversations go 20, 20 15, 20 years ago? And, and, my, and, 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 and here's my point, Mark. We can disagree philosophically, but what I can't get beyond folks on the liberal side is the number one rule of politics, the number one rule, at least in my family growing up black in the hood of St. Louis, you take care of your family first. Then if you have an extra morsel of bread to feed your neighbor or your, your, your kid friend down the block, you help them out. But what I see now is like being an American citizen is almost like a liability. I mean, you get How nothing. So? At, well, I mean, for example, <clears throat> I'm in New York all the time. I stay in Times Square. Now, I can well afford to stay in a $500 a night hotel. Don't do it. But when I see most of the Manhattan <laughs> hotels, Money. I mean, that's the yeah, money, honey. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to keep it too, <clears throat> but my my point is, and Mark, and I think I would like to think even you would see my point on this is it's not that I'm cold and callous and, and lacking compassion, but how can I see a fellow citizen who don't have an apartment to live in in New York City, Chicago, St. Louis, Baltimore, but yet I see little kids in New York getting kicked out of baseball fields so they can put up a, you know, outdoor shelter for illegals. And now my kid had nowhere to play baseball during the summertime. That's happening mind, all over the country. Do you mind if I ask oh, a quick I'm, question? I'm in, please. Yeah, please. Yeah. I'm, I'm just a little bit curious whenever okay. I hear Republicans talk about this a little bit, because Republicans are against social programs for Americans almost always, right? When you talk about, helping with student debt or with better health care or with all kinds of social programs. You know, we don't have money for it. No, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. But then the second it becomes about any kind of minimal services to help um, people who are crossing the border survive in this country, it suddenly becomes we should take care of our own. Why can't we take care of our own without even talking about that part of it? You have a military budget that is through the roof that keeps expanding at a rate that the Pentagon does not want the expansion. Whenever the Pentagon says we want this much money and then Congress falls over each other, demanding an even higher military budget that we actually don't need and don't put to good use. And in the meantime, we're trying to blame minimal social services for immigrants or, or what have you and saying this is the reason why we're not taking care of our own. Why not tackle this issue where it should be tackled, which is where we're actually wasting money and money that is not helping anyone, spending okay, it on planes me, that don't work. Let me ask you. Sure. Oh, oh. Okay, you will agree with me that our number one pro priority must and has to be taking care of American citizens. Do we agree on that sure. point there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, without military spending, and I agree with you, the Pentagon is way, way too big. I think we can be just as effective militarily, especially with all the technology. But at the same time, I understand the nexus between military spending and us being able to do this interview that we're doing because the internet came from DARPA, which is funded by DOD. And so without all this military spending, we wouldn't have all this technology, all the satellites flying around the sky. So one is a derivative of the other. Now, I, I'm willing to entertain a conversation with people with your uh, viewpoint, about can we better utilize the money spent in DOD? And I say, absolutely, absolutely yeah. we Just can. On, on that note, it's money that they can't account for. I mean, the Pentagon mm -hmm. can't yeah. pass an audit 
and most of this money goes into the pockets of private military contractors. So you've got I agree. It's, I agree. It's, it's an entire system that is deeply broken, and that's where most of the money, like just the amount of money that is being spent there compared to what is being spent on so, social services for migrants and refugees, it's not even close. And so it just seems well, like- Well, I agree. But but again, my default position is, and, and it's always going to be, again, it's not that I'm lacking compassion, but I mean, I'm, I'm guy, I just have a hard time reconciling walking down the streets here in DC and seeing an American citizen with need and the government, the politician on a local level saying, we don't have the budget for, for American citizen, but somehow they find money out the blue to take care of uh, illegal. That's my only point of contention. Once we take care of our fellow citizens, I'm willing to open up my heart to other folks. So uh, illegal I'm, is crazy. Um, is it, <laughs> are we calling it illegal? But migrants, like I, I rather, you know, the term illegals. You know, it just this has this negativity with that. But no, that's codified. That's that that's actually what the statute says. That if you're not here lawfully, you are illegally in the U.S. That is actually part of the right, statute. We're not, we're not, we're not, a legal term. Right, but we're not, legally, we're not legally bound to use dehumanizing language. You're not legally bound to refer to people by their legal designation. You it's okay. Call each other all kinds of things other than, other than what the law says we are. Right? We call each other human beings. We call each other friends. We call each other documented. We call each other uh, patriots. We call each other citizens. We call each other all kinds of things. And in this case, discourse of the illegal becomes a way to dehumanize uh, people and also to, to stigmatize very particular uh, people, very particular uh, migrants and immigrants to the country and, and not others.